Okay, now a quick video on uh, xylem and phloem cell structure. Now you need to be able to, uh, just before we start, I've got a sort of a 3D-ish image, lovely colours of uh, xylem in red and phloem in this sort of bluey green colour. Uh, you need to be able to recognise them from diagrams and you need to be able to recognise them from photographs taken down a microscope and, and from electron micrographs as well. So um, I can recommend that you do a bit of sort of surfing, looking at a few different books, so, um, see what sort of images that they've got. So, um, what do we all know about xylem? So the thing that we know about xylem is that it is involved in the transport of water and dissolved minerals. And I think it's important at this point to point out that this is always going in one direction, roots to leaves. And there will be a video on cohesion tension theory. It never goes backwards. Just keeps going forwards, forwards, roots to leaves, roots to leaves, roots to leaves. Um, and these cells are dead cells. They have no contents. And that means that the transport of water is, um, is passive. It's not using ATP at all. And it would, you know, will happen in, in dead tissue. So if we're going to transport water and we're going to transport it in bulk, we don't want any impediment. And so these cells have no, they're dead cells, with no contents. So there's no impediment to flow. Now actually it turns out that leaves are suckers and so they're actually sucking water up and so the, um, the water is under tension and we'll explain that in a later video which means that the pressure is negative So if you poked a hole into the xylem from the outside, it, air would rush in from high pressure in the atmosphere to low pressure inside of the xylem. Um, and that means that the xylem vessels would tend to collapse. So the walls are thickened. with lignin. This is the stuff that stains red down the microscope. And what that does is it prevents collapse because of that negative pressure. So, thickening. What to look for in diagrams or uh, photographs. If you're looking from the top, that means that what you'll see is uh, something with a lot of space in between and thickened walls like that. If you're looking at a picture from the side, what you might see are s circles, so you know, sort of just fill in the back there. That's called annular thickening. It might be a more spiral looking affair. So as they lay down more and more lignin, we've got annular thickening, we've got spiral thickening, and we also have uh, reticulate thickening. Remember reticulate means network, uh, where you know sort of gradually, 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 sort of filled in, filled in, filled in, and you get left with little holes, like you see there. And those holes are called pits. Oh yeah, they're labelled for you, here they are three pits labelled. 
We don't call these cells xylem cells because they don't have any uh, contents. So these are called xylem vessels or vessel elements. So a xylem vessel or a vessel element. And you can see that on this we've also got tracheids. That's a great name, isn't it? Please don't confuse it with uh, trachea and <laughs> tracheoles and all the other things. Again, they have pits in them. They are much smaller than, far more tapered. Um, and s some plants, like uh, the, um, the conifers, have mostly tracheids. Uh, mosses have only tracheids, so they're quite primitive uh, water conducting tissue. Again, they are um, dead cells, and you can see that they have tapered ends that sort of butt next to each other so that they're not, so the water can go, you know, in here, in this big vessel here, it's just going to go straight up, and in here it's going to have to go through the end walls, and it could possibly, you know, go off into another one through a pit. So these pits um, are allowing lateral movement. So the water's moving up, but it can also move a little bit sideways, maybe if there's an air blockage. Now phloem, on the other hand, is a living tissue. So what do we know about phloem? Looking for a lovely colour. Lost my purple pen. Oh no, it's there. Uh, so, phloem. So this is transporting sucrose, amino acids, you know, all those organic things. But mainly sucrose. So a plant's photosynthesizing, it makes glucose. Yeah, it makes them into fructose, it joins them together, sucrose is the plant transport sugar. It can take things in two directions, so effectively that sugar is moving from leaves to areas of use. Um, we kind of call those, and again, subject of a later video, Leaves are sources, areas of use are sinks, where they're used up. So these are living cells. But again, we're using them, you know, plants are using them for bulk transport. So they have no organelles. So they're not impeding the flow by having a load of, you know, sort of, molecules travelling through and kind of bumping into a bit of endoplasma reticulum. When we did cell structure you saw that the cells are absolutely chock-a-block with organelles. Phloem sieve uh, tubes, or sieve tube elements as I like to call them. So these are sieve tubes. No nucleus, so you know, quite similar to a red blood cell. And, and again it's too to not impede the flow, to not impede transport. Now obviously they're living, so they are going to need some ATP, they're going to need some uh, other stuff, and where they get those from is from companion cells, which sort of feed and look after the sieve tube. Companion means friend, these are friendly cells, they are quite willing to give some ATP and some proteins to those cells. Uh, as and when they need them. That's kind, isn't it? And the sort of key features to look for with phloem uh, are these sieve plates here, which is why they're called sieve tube elements. So, sieve plates from the surface where you to look at a phloem cell and it was chopped through where a sieve plate is, surprisingly looks like a sieve. Lots of little holes in it and you can see those on here. Uh, if we look at them from the side, they've got their sieve plates. So these are not sort of as long, they're not forming these continuous tubes with no end walls like xylem is. They're, 
they are divided where their end walls were by sieve plates and then they have these companion cells next to them that do have a nucleus. So these are carrying um, sucrose so the pressure in a in a phloem sieve tube the pressure is positive so if you poked a hole into one it would leak its contents out um, which is something that's used to good effect by aphids when they're feeding. So you need to know some of the features, you need to be able to recognise those from photographs, from electron micrographs, uh, from 3D pictures, from the 2D pictures like mine, you need to be able to recognise them from the top and the side and you need to know the sort of significance of their features. So we'll just add in companion cells there. So companion cells are always associated with them and they are providing uh, ATP and proteins to the sieve tube elements. Okay, do have a look at some more diagrams, would be my advice.